Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to recover uh, or rescue uh, this router. This is the TP-Link TL-WDR4300. It is a wireless N750 dual band router and it is an excellent product. Uh, I can't recommend it highly enough. I think it's awesome. But uh, my issue was I was using a third uh, party firmware. It's called DD-WRT and I put in a buggy version of that uh, firmware and it seems to have uh, uh, bricked my router. So really, um, it's not really bricked, it's sort of disabled. I'll show you what it looks like in its current state. And basically what happens is exactly this. The power light comes on and then all the LEDs flash on, as you'll see here. And then this cycle just keeps going over and over and over again. So. Uh, and you can't connect to it. You can't uh, do anything with it. It's basically in a disabled state. So what we're going to do is bring this back from the uh, brink and uh, make it functional again. So the first thing we're going to do is go to TP-Link. Uh, you know, you're going to need access to the internet. So if your router is toast, I suggest going to another computer or another person's house and putting this software on a USB key and bringing it back to your router. So we're going to go to TP-Link, so that's www.tp-link, and in my case, .us. It'll direct you to whatever site is nearest to you. Next, we're going to go to Support, and we're going to click on Download. And when we go to Download, of course, mine is a wireless dual band, and it's the TL-WDR4300. Um, I'm not sure if this will work on uh, any other TP-Link router. I, I know it works on the WR841N slash ND, which I made a video on, but I know it works on this one for sure. So, you know, if you have it, hey, there's no real harm in trying. It may work for, for your uh, specific model of TP-Link router. Now, um, the, the file or the firmware you want to download is the TL WDR4300, but it's the latest version for whatever router you're using. I'm, like I said, doing the WDR4300. And the latest version of firmware for that is the uh, 141113. So we're going to click on that and download it. And I'm going to put it into my C drive. You put it wherever you'd like. You know, whatever is the, the most convenient for you. And um, let's see, let's just put it into here, TP-Link WD4300. Uh, maybe that's, there's too much stuff in there. Let's make a, oh, here we go, WDR4300, rescue. All right, and it's a zip file, but I'll show you how to handle that. So we're going to hit save on that. You know where you've put it. Um, I'm using Chrome here, but I'll use the folder, uh, the file manager to show you how to get to it. So we're going to C drive again. And right to the folder where I saved it, which was the WDR4300B Rescue. And there it is. So the next thing you do is just right click it and choose um, Extract All right here. All right. And if this is checked off, uncheck it because we're not going to go look at it right now. We're just going to extract the file. So hit Extract. All right. And it creates another folder with the same name above it. And you'll see there the bin file. Okay, we're going to rename that file, but not, not quite yet. First, we're going to go uh, get some software, and then I'll show you what the file should be called for this. All right, so let's just minimize. I'm just going to minimize this. Next thing you need, you need to get is a program called TFTPD. So it's Chrome, so all you have to do is just uh, type in TFTPD. If you don't have it, go to a Google search and just Google TFTPD and enter then we're going to go to the download section of that program and in the download section you'll see a whole bunch of different uh, versions but the only one we really need here is the 4.50 and you want the TFTPD32 standard edition installer uh, it's the simplest way to get this program installed so we're just going to click on that and it's going to go into the same uh, WDR4300 rescue uh, folder I have here. You put it where you'd like. Just remember where you put it and click save. All right. If you're using a key, just put it on your key. 
And the next thing you're going to do is install that software into your machine. So we're going to minimize this. Again, I'm going to use the file browser. And I know it's right here. There's the TFTP32. Double click that. My uh, user account control is asking me if I want to do this. I'll say yes. If yours does, say so as well. I don't think that's going to show up on my video, but just hit yes. And then on this, uh, hit agree. And then just go with all the defaults. Go next. Go install. It's a pretty short program. There we go. And then close. It's finished. Uh, minimize this out of the way for now. And here it is right here on my desktop, or there's a link to it anyway. Uh, so at this point, we're almost ready to go. Next thing I'm going to show you is how, what this thing looks like uh, in a boot mode. I have a serial connection to this router, so I'm just going to clear this here. Reset the terminal. All right, and here's, like I said, you don't need a, re a serial connection for this, and it's a beautiful thing that you don't. But I'm just going to show you what's happening uh, from the uh, internal point of view of this router. So you see that it's it's basically going to reboot every time it gets to that rebooting in one second thing. Um, so basically, I'm just showing you that it's it's actually uh, you know messed up. So here I'm just going to stop it, and I'm going to initiate the repair procedure. Okay, and that's then I shut it off. But basically, what I wanted to show you is that you know it's it's asking for a specific file on a specific IP address. So it's looking for a TFTP server on zero, sorry, one nine two dot one six eight dot zero dot sixty six and a file name called this right here. All right. So just I'm just showing you that. Uh, for its functionality, I'll put the the this information uh, in inside the video description. Next, we're going to our, our network icon right down here at the bottom right hand side, and uh, either right click it or click it and choose Open and, and Sharing Center, Open Network and Sharing Center. Once you get there, you're going to do, go to Change Adapter Settings, and you want to disable your wireless. Why do we want to disable the wireless? Because you want to make sure that you're only connecting to your router physically okay so i'm just going to hit disable here please follow along and do that and next thing you need to do is make sure that your router is hooked up this way i got a, a patch cable and the router came with one i have a patch cable to port one and that patch cable is routed over to my uh, port uh, network uh, port on my laptop if you have a computer, same thing. Just patch the, the port number one to the um, network uh, port on your computer. So once you have it hooked up like that, uh, you're almost ready. Well, you're basically ready to go. Next, uh, we've disabled the network connection. That's great. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to set up our uh, LAN connection or local area connection so that it it actually is reflecting what the router is looking for, which is the 192.168.0.66. So we go here, right click that uh, local area connection, and then click on properties. And then go down to internet uh, protocol version four, TCP IP version four, just double click that. And we're gonna use a specific address, and that address is 192.168.0. Dot 66. Then I uh, click on the subnet mask down here and it should auto auto populate that. And that's all the numbers you need to put in here. And just hit OK and OK again. You know, like I said, I, I'm I'm very impressed with TP Link for putting this functionality into their routers. It certainly does help uh, in recovering them. So next, um, I, that's it for the network configuration. We're basically done. Uh, let's I'm just going to power on the router for a second, make sure that this uh, actually yeah, so see, as you can see, it's just going to go through this loop at identifying and then rebooting. So it's working. It's talking there. So um, let me scroll back up here. See if I can find it. There it is. So this is the file it's looking for right here. All right. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to put this file into the uh, 
uh, video description just so that you know you don't have to copy it off the screen you can just copy it out of the video description and there's what it's called WDR 4300 version 1 or V1 uh, case lowercase V1 and case is important make sure you get the right case so everything is lowercase um, V1 underscore TP underscore recovery dot bin so we're going to take that and we're going to rename the uh, bin file we downloaded from TP link so I'm going to open that file again and again it's inside the folder the the unzip folder here the 141113 double click that and then right click the WDR bin file you see here and we're just going to hit rename and we're going to delete everything in here and then we're going to hit paste and that gives us the right file name that the uh, actual router is looking in there in its recovery mode so now we're going to uh, basically we're almost ready to go next thing to do is uh, set up the FTT FTP server and uh, we'll go from there so scroll that down to the bottom so double click on TFTPD 32 and you need to browse to where you save that bin file so as I said I put mine on in the WDR 4300 version rescue um, you go where you left it and then you see the subfolder where I put the bin file so it's right there okay so I hit OK and then hit show directory just to make sure you've got the right file in there and you you know it looks like we do let's take the notepad out take a look at that and there it is WDR 4300 so on and so on and so on so we're in the right folder you've you've shown the uh, TFTP server which is what this program becomes where that file is okay so you browse to the directory show the show directory to make sure you're in the right one and then um, we're going to change here to 192.168.0.166 if this doesn't show up then you don't have your network configuration correct uh, correctly configured so at this point we're almost ready to go next step is to uh, hold your power button down I'm oh, sorry hold your reset button down and then power on your router and continue to hold the router uh, reset button down for about three seconds so just count one two three and that should be enough so let's go do that and you'll see what happens here uh, between my serial connection and the TFTPD uh, program uh, it will grab the file and it will show you the progress of doing that here so let's do it I'm holding my reset power my reset button down and powering it up now one two three and there we go it's downloaded the file to the actual router now it's uh, actually uh, copying the file or uh, writing the file as you can see here in my serial connection um, again like I said you don't need the serial connection you just need to be patient uh, I'm doing this real time so you can see how long this takes and uh, just let it go okay now it's going to copy uh, copy it to flash and this doesn't give us any progress here at all uh, but currently on my router I have uh, three lights on the first one and the last two in other words the first to the very left the power and the last two on the right actually not the last two <laughs> the first to the power light and the uh, second to the last and the last on the right and there we go you can see that the uh, router has rebooted and amazingly enough appears to be uh, booting normally so I'm gonna let this go all the way down all the way to the end where it uh, steadies out and then we're gonna connect to it all right I think no we're not done yet everything looks good it's not rebooting every two seconds uh, it's actually doing exactly what it's supposed to do so right now the router should be back to its um, native stock firmware so 
Let's go to our, our browser. And in the browser, we're going to type in uh, 192.168.0.1, which is the default IP address for the TP-Link router right out of the box. And there we go. Now it's asking you for a username and password. Well, the username is admin. It's a default username. And the password is admin. So just put in admin, admin, and hit login. And ta-da! The router is now restored. Um, so, or rescued. So here we are. The firmware is showing us the right revision number here. Uh, everything's cool. Let's go to system tools and yeah. Everything seems to be uh, functioning just fine. So we're not quite done yet. At this point, you're done with the router. You do what you wish with it. At this point, you can, uh, uh, you know, you can configure it how you like or upgrade it, whatever you wish at this point. But we're not done here. We need to reset our network con uh, configuration back to our normal one. So go down here to the network icon, uh, right-click it, choose Open Network and Sharing Center, change adapter settings. And we'll go to right click on the local area connection first and hit properties and internet TCP IP protocols. So version four, uh, which set this back to obtain IP and DNS server addresses automatically. The router should be uh, giving you those now. I'm going to hit OK here. Uh, TFTP server will, will actually fail when you do that because you've changed the IP address on it. So just hit close on that and as you can see it's now identifying it as a TP link 2.4 gigahertz so on and so forth so we're connected there right click cl click on status then go to details and you'll see now that you have a different IP address 0.100 that's fine uh, that's what it's giving you so no problem there and then right click on your wireless connection highlight it right click it and enable uh, that way you can, uh, you know, get back on your wireless connection if you wish or hook up wirelessly to this router again. So that's it. That's how you rescue this router without a serial connection. That's it for my video. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you like this video and it helped you out in some way, do me a favor. Click on the like button right down here. And, uh, you know, if you wish to subscribe to my channel, just click on this link up here. And that should subscribe you to the, the uh, Richard Lloyd channel or Richard Lloyd USA channel. Um, okay, again, thank you very much for your time and watching.